So hi guys, today we're going to be talking about accounting for partnership formation. There are two ways in which a partnership can be formed. One would be when two or more individuals form a business for the first time. The second would be when a single proprietorship is converted into a partnership. Two possible combinations may arise from this. One would be a sole proprietorship, forming a partnership with other individuals, while the other would involve two or more sole proprietors. Now we will be discussing the opening entries for each of the scenarios above. First, we will discuss the entries when two or more individuals form a business for the first time. For capital partners, money or other assets may be invested into the company. So for a cash investment, debit cash and credit the partner's capital. For a non-cash asset investment, simply debit all the non-cash asset accounts and credit the partner's capital accounts. In certain cases, the partnership may assume the liabilities related to the non-cash asset invested, such as a mortgage for a building. You just need to make a debit to all the non-cash assets and a credit to the liabilities assumed and the partner's capitals. It must be noted that the non-cash asset would be debited at its fair market value. The liability account would be credited at the balance assumed by the partnership while the capital would be credited at the net amount, which is the difference between the non-cash assets' fair market value and the amount of liabilities assumed. To make things easier, you can simply compound the entries as shown here. Simply debit cash and non-cash assets for the respective amounts and credit all liabilities assumed by the partnership as well as the capital accounts for the respective amounts as well. Again, all entries discussed just now are for capital partners. A different approach is taken when it involves industrial partners. For industrial partners, we no longer have to make a journal entry. Instead, we simply make a memo entry as shown here. So you just draw a T account for C, so that's C capital, and write a memo indicating C is admitted as an industrial partner with how many share in profits. Next, we will be discussing the entries when a sole proprietor forms a partnership with other individuals. The process for this scenario would be a bit more complicated. We would need to perform three steps, namely the revaluation of assets and liabilities of the sole proprietorship. Second would be the closing of the books of the sole proprietorship. And the last would be to record the opening entries for the partnership books. To understand the process, let's use this problem. For example, Danny, a sole proprietor, decided to form a partnership with his friend Michael, who agreed to invest 120,000 pesos worth of cash into the partnership. All assets will be invested and all the liabilities will be assumed by the partnership. So the books of Danny reveal the following. So cash of 32,000, accounts receivable of 50,000, notes receivable 20,000, inventory 49,500, equipment 100,000, accumulated depreciation 40,000, accounts payable 45,000, notes payable 20,000, and Danny capital 146,500. So... Additional information provided would be 10% of the accounts receivable is estimated to be uncollectible. Inventory is overstated by 10%. Equipment is to be depreciated only by 30%. And a 1,500 interest on notes payable has already accrued but has not been recorded. So again, the first step we need to do is to revalue the assets and liabilities of the single proprietorship because these are recorded at historic prices and we need to update them. Remember that no nominal accounts should be used in this step. All adjustments requiring nominal accounts would be debited or credited directly to the capital account. So first we have here 10% of accounts receivable estimated to be uncollectible. 
So under normal circumstances, the adjusting entry would require a debit to bad debts expense and a credit to allowance for bad debts. However, in this case, all adjustments requiring nominal accounts should be closed directly to the capital account. The correct entry, therefore, is to debit Danny Capital and credit allowance for bad debts for 10% of 50000 or 5000 Next, we have an overstated inventory by 10%. Since the problem says overstated by 10%, it means that the current balance is 110% of the actual balance. So to get the actual balance, divide the amount stated by 1.1. Multiplying 10% to the amount you will get will give you the amount for the adjustment. So here we have inventory worth 49,500. If you divide this by 1.1, we get 45,000. 10% of 45,000 is 4,500, which is the amount for the adjustment. The third problem states that equipment should only be depreciated by 30%. This means that accumulated depreciation should only be equal to 30% of 100,000 pesos or 30,000 pesos. The accumulated depreciation recorded earlier in the books is 40,000 pesos, which means that it is overstated by 10,000. So to correct this, we need to make a debit to accumulated depreciation and a credit to capital by 10,000 pesos. This will increase both the assets and capital of the sole proprietorship. Lastly, we have the accrual of interest on notes payable. So the normal adjusting entry would be to debit accrued interest expense and credit interest payable. However, again, we need to replace nominal accounts with the capital account. The correct entry, therefore, is to debit Danny Capital and to credit interest payable for 1500 So after evaluation, we get the following balances. So those in black are the ones that had no changes in them. So that's cash, accounts receivable, notes receivable, equipment, accounts payable, and notes payable. So since we revalued the accounts receivable, we now have an account for allowance for bad debts of 5000 And then inventory has decreased to 45000 Accumulated depreciation is now 30000 And we have an interest payable of 1500 Danny Capital is now down to 145500 So after evaluating all the assets and liabilities, the next step would be to close the books of the sole proprietorship. The process for closing the books was already discussed in your previous course, ACBA 1. But to refresh your memory, you just need to credit accounts with a normal debit balance, while those with a normal credit balance must be debited. So, looking back at the balances after evaluation, we need to debit allowance for bad debts, accumulated depreciation, accounts payable, notes payable, interest payable, and Danny Capital, as shown here. And then we need to credit all the assets, which are cash, accounts receivable, notes receivable, inventory, and equipment. Take note of all the accounts with the red underline because we need to compare these when it comes to opening the partnership books. After closing the books, we can now record the opening entries for the partnership books. To do so, we debit all the assets that the sole proprietor will invest and the liabilities that the partnership will assume. The entries for the investment of the individual, in this case Michael, will be similar to those discussed in the previous scenario. So you just need to debit all the assets invested, so in this case that's cash, accounts receivable, notes receivable, inventory, and equipment. And then you need to credit all the liabilities assumed in the capital. So that's allowance for bad debts, accounts payable, notes payable, interest payable, and Danny Capital. 
And then for the new partner, you just simply need to debit cash for 120,000 and credit Michael Capital for 120,000. Note that the equipment or any property plant and equipment for the matter is carried net of accumulated depreciation or, or in short at its carrying value. The accumulated depreciation account is no longer found here. It's not carried over, meaning it is not recorded when opening the books. Accounts receivable, however, is recorded at its gross value of 50000 meaning before deducting allowance for bad debts. The allowance for bad debts account is carried over, meaning it is recorded when opening the partnership books. So there you have it. When converting two sole proprietorships into a partnership, you simply have to go through steps one and two for each sole proprietorship, so that's revaluation and closing the books, and then proceed to step three to form the partnership where you make the opening entries. So there you have it. Um, I hope you learned something today.